Rub up your engines! Today I'm gonna talk about conversion vans. What do you look for if you're buying a used one? Now, you want a clean, non-rusted body and frame. This one's from Texas, it's pretty clean. And yeah, they do have an awful lot of room inside them. There's no arguing that. Now you don't care about little things like this. You look at the overall picture when you're buying a used one. And overall, this one's in excellent shape. Frame. Everything's solid, solid steel and it's not rot. So cosmetically, hey, it's a pretty decent vehicle. Let's check it out mechanically and electronically. So I'll plug the old scan tool in and get some serious data. Now this has three trouble codes. So let's see what they are. This is the boring part, waiting. PO302, PO316, P1000, PO316, again the PO302. So it's got minor misfires in cylinder number two, and the misfire in startup is the same thing. So basically it's misfiring on cylinder number two. Now that's no real reason to not get a vehicle, because it could be as simple as a coil on plug, a bad spark plug, but then again it could be as bad as there's that gasket starting to blow, but that's relatively rare on these big Ford V8 engines. Fords has some interesting software. As you can see here, it tests stuff automatically. So we have the key on engine off, and we're gonna see what happens. This is really complicated, it tells you what to do. Turn the key on. <laughs> All the codes that we had before, there's no different ones. So if somebody has something hidden, it's not gonna hide from the machine, the machine's gonna figure it out itself. So the test is still the same codes it shows, so the main problem is cylinder number two is misfiring on it. Let's look at some live data here. That gets even more information. We got pages of data, and if you wonder, what all this stuff means? Well, Scotty's a genius, he knows it all, but Scotty also cheats, because if there is a problem, it won't be black, it's color-coded, so if there's a problem, the color's gonna change. So I do look at the data, especially when I'm curious about something, but as long as they're all in black and white, you really don't have to worry that there's any kind of a problem. Here we go, everything's so normal so far. No fault, that's what you wanna see. No faults, there's lots of no faults. <laughs> You can see there's an awful lot of information these things have. So you don't have to worry anymore about somebody hiding something from you. As long as you find a guy like me, they can check all this stuff out and see if there's any particular problems. Now, as we see here, the injectors are showing no faults. Well, that's a good thing. So that tells us that the misfire is not an injector problem. You could have a misfire in an injector. You would have misfire cylinder number two if it was the injector, but there's no faults for the injector. So that means it's odds are it's a bad ignition coil. No color showing up saying there's a problem. And this is something you really want to know, especially on a Ford, transmission data. You want to make sure the transmission data is good because that's the weakest point of these vans are their automatic transmissions. But this has no faults with the transmission, so that's a good thing. Now once we get it open, this is the main problem with all these conversion vans. Take a look inside. There isn't much working room. <laughs> there is not much working room in these things. As you can see, you gotta go inside the van, you gotta take all of this crap off, and then the engine's in there and you can work at it. But every time you work on the engine, you gotta take all this junk out of the way, which does make it kind of a pain in the butt to work on. Well, so far it shows to be a pretty good conversion van. Then any serious problems, the transmission is good from all the data that's coming in it. And, I mean, if you're looking for a conversion van, you can't go wrong with a Ford. Parts are always available for them. Anywhere on the planet, really. And they're not outrageously expensive. Yes, they're gas hogs. Every conversion van out there is a gas hog. You don't get them for gas mileage. You get them for the convenience of carrying. Whatever you want to carry around. People, parts, whatever. But don't think you're going to get good gas mileage, because you can't. They weigh too much. Okay, it's a blast from the past. Here we go. 13 city miles, 17 highway. And it was originally about $25,000. And this one was smartly purchased. They purchased it from basically the original owner. Big is the reason people buy these things. Sure, I'm hitting my head on the roof now, but I do have quite a bit of room for walking around inside. You got a great stereo system. Nice privacy blinds, little screen windows, cup holders galore. Look at this. It's like opera lighting in here. We had a night at the opera inside this thing. And they're on the sides too, left and right. Now it would be nice if the big screen TV up here worked, but the remote has been corroded away by acid technology and the batteries not having been changed in a decade and a half. So we can't get that on, but well, here we go. They've got this cool little wood cabinet here to store stuff. 
Oh, wow, well, pretty good deal. There's all kinds of cabinet storage in this thing. Now you saw the sticker price of this thing. He paid less than about 20% of what the original sticker price was, and it does have an awful lot still going for it. Yeah, the carpet's in better shape than the one in my house. <laughs> original leather seats, though comfy as can be, yeah, they're a little cracked, but I've shown you. You can actually re-dye these things, even in the car, and then you just put conditioner on top of it after you dye them, and they look pretty good. Start her up, and away we go. And here we go, going on the highway, nice smooth shifts. Actually, it rides very smooth for a vehicle that's got a 150 something thousand miles on it. There's really nothing wrong with getting a good used Ford. Hey, they hold up, there's parts available, and you've got a lot of space in these things. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.